Morning, everybody. Thanks for coming first thing this morning. After months of back and forth, it is now time for the House to pass our Rwanda legislation. And no more prevarication, no more delay. Right? And in doing this, Parliament will put beyond all doubt that Rwanda is a safe country. Now, as you all know, because you've been involved, this bill represents months and months of hard work and planning. And now is the time to put all that planning into action and to get flights off the ground as soon as possible. So Richard Sunak gave a press conference earlier in Downing Street in which he talked about uh, his flagship Rwanda plan to deport illegal migrants um, to this East African country. Um, the bill is currently deadlocked in Parliament because um, peers in the House of Lords uh, are refusing uh, to pass the bill in the form that the government wants. And so we've been having this wrangling now, which has lasted three weeks, uh, and Rishi Sunak said today that this will come to a head tonight and that Parliament will sit for as long as it takes for the Lords to back down. If Labour peers had not spent weeks holding up the bill in the House of Lords to try to block these flights altogether, we would have begun this process weeks ago. And the success of this deterrent doesn't rest on one flight alone. It rests on the relentless, continual process of successfully and permanently removing people to Rwanda with a regular rhythm of multiple flights every month over the summer and beyond until the boats are stopped. Now, I know there are some who will hear all of this and accuse me of lacking compassion, but the truth is the opposite. So it's going to come back to the Commons this afternoon. It would then go back to the Lords. We are expecting the Lords to then send it back to the Commons. And this back and forth known as ping pong, Rishi Sunak made clear today, will carry on until the Lords give way to the will of the elected chamber, a.k.a. the Commons. So that's expected to happen tonight. And we're expecting the safety of Rwanda bill to therefore pass. And King Charles can give that royal assent in the next few days. And so it becomes law. But in this, the most interesting thing, about this press conference is Rishi Sunak talked about how it would actually work in practice to get flights off to Rwanda because lots of people have been questioning the feasibility of sending these. We haven't really heard much details about how migrants can be sent there. Do they have a plane? Do they have an airfield? Does Rwanda have the capacity to actually take all of these people? Uh, and so Rishi Sunak sort of gave a bit of, gave a bit of more details about how this is gonna work. The next few weeks will be about action. But whilst I'm conscious people want deeds, not words, I'm not going to outline now exactly what will happen when. And there are good operational reasons for this. There is a loud minority who will do anything to disrupt our plan. So we will not be giving away sensitive operational detail which could hinder all the progress made to date. Teams across government need to be able to get on and deliver without interference. They are working flat out to deliver this genuine game changer. So he says that an airfield has been secured. That's on standby. Uh, chartered commercial planes have been secured. They're on standby. There was some um, suggestion that he would be forced to use the RAF because no commercial airline would actually sign up to this. Well, actually, he said that we have got this. Um, and then on the timeline, he said that this is going to be happening in the next 10 to 12 weeks. And so the first flight will go off by this count probably the first or second week of July. Now, this is a delay in the plan. Originally, remember this Rwanda plan is sort of two years in the making. It was first announced under Boris Johnson back in 2022. Well, as recently as last week, Rishi Sunak said that it was his firm intention to get flights going off the ground by the spring. And today what we had is the official ditching of that timeline and instead delaying it to the first few weeks of July. Now, he is obviously blaming Labour, Liberal Democrat, peers in the House of Lords for, in his view, frustrating uh, this timeline. However, people will also reasonably question, why is it taking 10 to 12 weeks after this bill gets royal assent to send people to Rwanda? If it is such emergency legislation and a national emergency in terms of the small boat crisis, as the government says it, then why on earth is it taking another few months for uh, flights to begin to Kigali? Um, hopefully we're going to get some of those details because he didn't really provide an explanation at this press conference for that sort of length of time. Um, so hopefully we're going to get some more details. We are in a battle with callous, sophisticated and global criminal gangs who care nothing for the lives they risk in unseaworthy dinghies. Nine people have died already attempting to cross the channel just this year. 
including a seven-year-old girl. That's why we've secured the largest ever deal with France to strengthen interceptions on the French coastline. And because a third of all arrivals were coming from Albania, we struck a deal that reduced illegal Albanian migrants by 90%. Taken together with doubling illegal working raids and returning 150 hotels back to our local communities, we got the number of small boat arrivals last year down by more than a third. The first time they had fallen since this phenomenon began, and at a time when European countries were seeing numbers rise exponentially. But these sophisticated gangs are changing tactics once again. In terms of broad brush stuff, Rishi Sunak is clearly going into an election um, keen to stress the fact that he is taking uh, the small boats crisis incredibly seriously, and that groundwork has been done while the passage of this bill is going through Parliament to try and get flights off the ground as quickly as possible. And he said that he wanted a constant stream of flights throughout the summer. Some of his critics have said that all you're going to get is one token flight and that won't be enough. He is challenging that head on. He is saying, I want a constant stream of flights throughout the summer to get this done. And if he can show that, if he can show that he is deporting uh, illegal migrants across uh, to Gigali and that is having a tangible effect on stopping small boats coming across the channel, then he can take that to voters sometime later this year and go, stick with me, stick with my plan, um, and I can solve this problem. The Lords have been the main sticking point in this bill going through uh, Parliament so far. Um, there is no sort of time uh, cap on how many times they can um, send this back to the commas. And so it is quite possible that they will um, just continue and continue to block. It doesn't seem that uh, Keir Starmer or Ed Davey, the Labour and Lib Democrat uh, leaders, have uh, shown any signs that they're going to back down. Um, however, you would expect the seizure you usually do in these scenarios. Um, Lords get quite uncomfortable with the idea of consistently uh, blocking um, the will of the Commons, who, after all, are the elected chamber as opposed to the unelected chamber of the Lords. And so I think that throughout uh, the next few hours, when this uh, comes back to Parliament, uh, this afternoon, you, you can expect to see more and more peers peeling off and joining the government each time this comes back. And so I think this will get done tonight. Well, Richie Sunak came out today with a lot of details. He said they've got enough case workers. They've freed up court spaces so you can hear appeals immediately. Uh, they've identified um, judges who can sit on these cases. Uh, they've got officials who are actually going to be in charge of getting people over uh, to Kigali. And that Kigali and uh, Rwanda is um, prepared to take people. Um, the question that will be on everyone's minds, including mine, is if that is the case, then what is, what is the reason for this 10 to 12 week gap between the legislation passing and the first flights taking off? Because it does seem that is a quite a long period of time if you had everything else together, if you had all your ducks in a row. And so potentially, and hopefully we'll be able to find this out uh, in the coming days, is, is there anything left that the government needs to do uh, to properly operationalize these flights? Because um, at the moment, it seems that you know, Richie Sunak says that you've got a lot of things in place, but it's every piece of the jigsaw there which is necessary to get people off Kigali.